Hi there. In the previous video, we looked at how we can test simple data structures such as strings, numbers, and to check if our values are truthy. In this video, we're going to look at how we can test more complicated data structures such as hash references or array references, and in general, just how to make comparisons in the nested data structures or list of data. All right, with that said, let's begin. The first method we're going to look at is called compare deeply. And before we do that, let's go to our script file where we have simple methods where we return data. And let's write a function that simply returns hash underscore ref. So let's name it hash ref and let's return a hash reference. So curly brackets and let's say key points to value 1 and b points to value 2. All right, that looks good. So if we go back to our test, now let's introduce a new method which is called compare deeply and compare deeply allows us to test nested data structures such as hash references and this is great because this is what we wrote that we have a method that returns a hash reference now we want to make sure that the structure of the hash reference contains the expected values so very similar as with methods like and is keywords as we looked at before we can type comparison method which is compare deeply then we provide the data that we got, which in this case would be from our subroutine, which is hash underscore ref. And then we provide the values that we expect it to return. For example, in this case, we expect it to return a key, which points to number one and B, which points to number two. And then we can provide an optional message that says got expected hash structure hash reference so if we save this and we run the prove command so prove and our test directory and our test we're going to see that all tests were successful so we are returning a hash reference here and we're checking that the keys are all the same and we're getting a successful test now what if we change one of the values and rerun the test we're going to see that it fails and it fails with saying that compare the data structure at key b and we got number two, which is from our method that we're returning here. So that's actually the B value, which we changed. So B is pointing to number two. And in our test, we're saying that we expected B to be number three. So this fails. This is incorrect. All right. So this works great. And that's actually not all you can do with compare deeply. Compare deeply is very, very powerful. You can actually test nested data structures even further, such as comparing that if this key points to an array ref, for example, we can add a new key, which is C. And we expect this to contain two strings, A and B. I'm going to fix the value where we said that B is 3, which is actually 2. And now we also want to introduce this value in our hash reference that we are returning from the script.pl. And if we rerun the test, we're going to see that this passes. So note that this is not limited only to the core structure of the keys. You can go even further. You can say that the third element is another hash ref with a key let's say g that points to value of 5 and if we update our script file we can also say the same so g pointing to 5 and rerun the test we're going to see that this passes and even further to that there are cases for example that you are retrieving data from database you're dealing with timestamps and these timestamps might change or you're injecting the data in your test which creates a timestamp on a fly and maybe you don't want to test for that specific value and there can be a scenario, for example, where you write a test today, right? The timestamp is pointing to a specific date, specific time, and then you run the test tomorrow and suddenly those tests start failing. So how can you indicate to your test that you would like to ignore that key? Well, it's actually quite simple. So let's change this value that we are returning from Hashref. And let's say this is 2012, sometime in the past now, August. Well, if we save that and if you go back to our test, what you can do, you can specify this keyword, which is called ignore. And that's going to tell that we would like to ignore this structure, the key C value, and just compare the remaining values in return data. If we run the test now, we're going to see that it passed. However, if you go back to the script and let's say that all the data that we're returning is actually not containing a C key. And let's see what's going to happen there. Our test actually fails now. And if you look at the failure, it's going to say that it's missing a key C. So you can provide through the ignore keyword that you don't want to test the value of a specific structure, but you still need to have that structure, specifically the key in place, in order for test to pass. 
And there's even more things you can do. For example, let's say you are returning a string, which is, let's use the C key again. Let's assign a value of cat there. If we save that, go to our test file. What if we don't know that it's always going to be cat? Maybe it's going to be cat or dog, but we know it's going to be one of those values. Well, one of the things what you can do, you can also use rejects. If you use keyword re, quote rejects, and then the pattern you want to use. So for example, we can say that it can be cat or let's say it can be also dog. If we save this, rerun the test, it passes now because the value that we're returning from the hash ref structure is cat. And we're saying, well, we're expecting this to be a string and it can contain either cat or dog. Of course, if we now remove the cat and rerun the test, we're going to see that this fails because for the value of C key, we expected the rejects, which matches dog, but we got a string of cat, so that obviously doesn't match. Now let's see, how can we test data structures as array refs? So for that, let's go back to our script file and let's introduce a new subroutine. Let's say sub array underscore ref, where we are going to return a simple array ref with values, let's say A, B, and C. All right, if we save that and let's go to our test file, we can still use the compare deeply. Let's replace this to array underscore ref and let's introduce the data structure we want to test, which was A, B, and C. And let's change this from hash to array and save that and rerun the test. Looks like we have syntax error. All right, we're missing comma after the data structure that we expect and rerun the test now. All right, so this now pass. Of course, if we introduce more elements, such as D and rerun the test is going to fail because now the date structure that we got contains three elements, but we actually expected four. Now there can also be cases where, where you would like to test your lists, but you don't really care about the order of elements. You care that only that elements exist in that data structure. For example, you don't care if you're getting ABC or BCA or CAB or so on and so on. We can't really use compare deeply for that, but what we can do we can use alternative method, which is called compare bag. And actually, if you look at the documentation, we're going to see that when we're calling the compare bag, this is actually called as compare deeply with got values, and it's calling the set method. So compare set is actually shorthand for this longer version. And another note here is that not looking at the main test modes documentation, this is actually in test colon colon deep module. We looked at the test modes composes of many modules that allows us to import all the utilities in one place, so we don't need to import specific modules for testing strings or or hash refs or, or debugging messages and so on and so on. All right, so going back to the test itself, what we really need to do now is if we use the array ref method and let's just leave everything as it is now and rerun the test. So this is still going to fail because we still have letter D in the expected data, but if we rerun it now, this is fine. However, if we change, let's say B, let's say it has first position and then A, and rerun the test, we're going to see that it passed. And it passed even though we're returning ABC and saying that we're expecting the data structure of BAC. So that's the difference of compare bag. It doesn't really matter what you are returning when it comes to order. All that really matters is that the same elements you have in your gut structure are equivalent or exist in your expected data structure you might want to test that your data structure that you got contains certain set of elements. For example, we have a set of elements of 1, 2, 3, 4, and we just want to make sure that in that list we have numbers 1 and 2. Now in that case, we can use the super bag method. And for that, there is no really shorthand for it, so we have to go back to using compare deeply. Then the data that we got, let's say I change this to, just for sake of different data, to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you go back to the test, let's call the array ref method again. And now we're going to use this super bag all. And then we're going to provide the elements that we expect to exist in the data structure that we got. So in this case, we know that we're returning one, two, three, four. And all we really kind of care about is that, let's say we have two and three in that list. So two and three separated by comma and a message got some of expected numbers. Oops, so let's save that and rerun the test, and it passes. 
because we do have two and three in the list of one, two, three, four. If we say that we introduce an item that doesn't exist in the original list, such as five, and rerun the tests, we can see that it fails because, well, we're missing five because we say that we are expected all items to contain at least two, three, five, but we don't have five in a rareref method. Now going back to the documentation, you're going to see that there are actually quite few methods that you can use to compare your data. There are class methods we're going to look at later on. You can check if your objects have expected methods, if the given instance is of expected type. You have additional bag methods that you can compare. Uh, you can also compare that the data you got back is a string or a number instead of using that is keyword, for example. There are a lot of great features in the testD module. I really recommend you to look at the documentation and explore it in more detail. It would simply be too long to look at all of these possibilities that we can use to test or data formats. But honestly, most of the time using methods such as compare deeply or compare bag is really going to get you the results that you're after when it comes to testing structures such as array refs or hash refs. All right, that's it for this video. We looked at how we can test different reference structures and some useful methods that allow you to refine what type of reference structure you want to test. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you at the next one.